Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today in this video, we will learn about Laravel observers. First, let's look at some eloquent model events. Model events allow you to execute code in some points in model's life cycle and there are 11 events in the model life cycle. These are model retrieved, creating, created, updating, updated, saving, saved, deleting, deleted, restoring, restored. These events are self-explanatory like when these events will fire. For example, this retrieved event will fire when an existing model retrieved from the database. When the model saved for the first time, then creating and create event will fire. If a model already exists in the database and we modify its data and call the save method to save it in the database, then updating and updated events will fire. However, in both cases, the save and saving event will be fire. And on delete model, this deleting and deleted event will be fire. And when deleted model is restored, this restoring and restored event will fire. Laravel provide us three ways to use these events. The one way is event listener. The second way is to overriding the boot function of the model itself. And the third way is the observers. Let's see how we can implement these three ways in Laravel. Before moving ahead, a quick reminder. If you are new to this channel, hit the red subscribe button and press bell icon so you could never miss our upcoming videos. Now let's start with the event listeners. So let's leave this. Let's say in the user model, we want to fire an event when a user is created. Maybe for sending a welcome email when user is created. So here we define protected dispatches events property. It's an array that maps model lifecycle events like created, updated to the event class. In our case, here I'll say created is equal to user created class. Now here we are saying when user is created, fire this event. We don't have this event class, so let's create this php artisan make event user created event created successfully app events and here is your user created event here in this construct method it will accept user model dollar user and here we say this user is equal to dollar user and right here let's define public dollar user now to handle this event we can also create listener for this so in terminal here we say php artisan make listener user created listener event is user created listener created successfully in the editor app listeners here is a user created listener now in this handle method we can execute any logic we need for the application for example sending a welcome email to the user when it is created now let's dump this event to check if it hits this event listener on create a user So here I say from user created listener and here we'll say event user. Here this event is this user created event class and this user is this public user. Our next step is to register this event listener in the event service provider class. So app 
providers event service provider right here we say user created class is equal to listener array that is user created listener class and make sure to import these classes here this is all we need here now let's see if it works and we know when we register a user then a user created in the database at that point we should see this term let's see this in browser now let's register a user arish arish at example dot com password and register class app user created not found we forget to import this class here and register again john unit example dot com password and register and here we get from user created event listener and this is the user object that is created similarly we can add more event listeners for other model life cycle events like updated is equal to user updated class i only use this way when i am working with the real time applications because this event class allows to broadcast the data for other cases i use overriding the models boot method or observers next let's see how we can use models boot method so first let's delete this and right here i will create public static function boot and next parent boot now right here i will say static created this created is a model event if you want to hook your code when the model is updated then you can say here static updated similarly if you want to execute your code when model deleted then you can say static deleted and so on for now here we say created and we pass closure function this closure function will accept model in our case that is this user model so here say it all a user now in this function we can write whatever the logic need to execute when a user is created for now i'm going to dump this user model and we see in the browser if it works when user is created so here i say from boot method and here we say dollar user now let's see this in browser this is another user adam adam at example dot com password and register now here we get this dump data from the boot method and this is the created user object similarly we can add more events like this so sometimes these may get bigger and you may want to move these events in the dedicated class so here the use of observers comes in observers allow you to group all of the events into single class now let's delete this and create an observer now in terminal i will say php artisan make observer user observer model is equal to user in the editor app observers 
here is the user observer class laravel has generated some boilerplate for us here we need only this create method so let's delete rest of the methods and here in this method i'll dump from user observer controller user now let's see if it works let's register again kumar kumar at example.com password it did not work actually we forgot to register this user observer in the service provider so let's navigate to event service provider right here in the boot method we say user observe user observer class now make sure to import these classes now let's see this in browser again smith smith her example dot com password register now we get this dump from user observer let's see one more example of the observer i believe you will definitely want to use that in your real life project so let's see Here you can see I have created category model and in the database migration category table I have added this string name column. I also created category factory to generate some demo categories. Next in the resources views layouts underscore nav dot blade dot php. Here I have created this drop down of categories. This is the for loop for category and this is the link for the single category. And I have included this nav partial in the app blade.php right here. Here this categories variable is passed to this nav blade file from the app service provider using this view composer. Here the blade layouts underscore nav. Here I have fetched the all categories and passed to the view right here. And in web routes, I have created this route to show single category. Let's see this in browser. Here is a drop down list of categories. And if I click on this, it will navigate to the category page. Now here in the debug bar, in case if you don't know what is the debug var and how to install it in the laravel application then i recommend you to watch the video on optimize laravel eloquent queries with eager loading you can find the link of it in the video description here you can see two sql queries if i navigate to other page you can see the one common query and here we can remove this query if we store all the categories in the cache. Let's see in app service provider. Now here to store all categories in the cache, here I'll say cache remember forever and the cache key name, let's say categories and here return all categories. Now let's see this in the browser, refresh, for the first time we will see this query because the categories were not in the cache. So it will execute the query and fetch the result and store the data in the cache. So if I refresh again and this time you will see no query in the debug bar. Great, it's working nice. All categories are working, we can navigate to each categories. But here is the big problem. If I update any category name and refresh it again, it will not affect here because these categories list is coming from the cache. Let's see, in terminal, 
php arts and ticker here i will fetch the first category so dollar category is equal to app category first next dollar category name is equal to let's say laravel category save now the category is updated come back to the browser refresh and it is not reflected here similarly if i add a new category or delete any existing category it will not reflect here because that category list is fetched from the cache so to fix this we have to clear the category cache when a new category created or category updated or an existing category deleted for that i will create an observer for category model so let's create this in terminal php artisan make observer category observer model is equal to category observer created successfully next in category observer here we have some boilerplate and here we need created updated and deleted method other we don't need so let's delete this now right here i'll create protected method clear cache in this method i'll say cache forget and here we pass the cache key that we want to delete if you see in the app service provider the key name is categories so let's paste this here now i call this function the all the event methods so here you say this clear cache copy this share and this share next i will register this observer in the event service provider so event service provider and here we say category observe category observer class now in browser refresh we still did not see any fact here because it's still fetched from the cache but this time if i update the category it will remove the category cache and here it will show fresh data so in terminal php artisan tinker i will fetch the first category and i'll say category name is equal to let's say this time php and category save now category is updated so add to browser refresh and this time you can see it is reflected right here and in the debug bar you can see a sql query is executed because it did not find the cache now it is cached so if i refresh again and here you will see no query executed similarly if i delete the category and here you can see only four categories and this sql query is executed again similarly if i create a new category we will see the same result let's see factory app category class create and this new category is created let's see 
and here it is listed here and this sql query is executed now every time when we update a category or add a new category or delete an existing category it will clear the cache every time and we will get fresh category data this is all in this tutorial if you like the video hit the like button share this video and don't forget to subscribe us see you in the next video mm -hmm.